Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top, beautiful summer evening here in the end times, finally in the Finger Lakes region of New York where I'm winding down my last few days here on this gorgeous Sunday night, <coughs> June the 9th. 2019, somewhere in there. I think it's June the 9th. Anyway, somewhere around there. So I can't believe it's been a week since I was sitting in this chair. One week ago tonight, talking about that flat earth thing that I wrote uh, when uh, I, I mentioned, of course, I, I kind of got off track into my uh, Doomsday Lonely Heart Adventures on Pile of Fish Dating Service. And uh, so I know how interested you guys are in Hamba and Little Tales. Desperate search for a doomer chick and looking for love in the ruins. It was that Walker Percy love among the ruins. So I don't even know where to dive in. But speaking of, uh, speaking of, uh, it, it has not been all bad. Uh, I know a lot of you have been uh, waiting with bated breath. It has finally happened uh, from this woman I met on Pile of Fish. We're going to call her Rosemary. We will call this nice lady Rosemary from uh, here in the Finger Lakes. Her limited edition ham bone palm oil free lavender soap is fresh off the presses and I must say I can uh, I heartily endorse this fine product now that when I say it was a limited edition I mean this is a limited edition I I got nine bars of it so this is great stuff, guys. This lavender soap with no palm oil. This is all organic lavender soap. And uh, I'm going to claim three bars of the Hambone. Scott, this is Hambone and Sancho and my mustard greens from Austin, Texas on the label. Uh, so anyway, I am going to auction off six... This is a once in a lot, literally guys, once in a lifetime opportunity and I want to thank Rosemary. I, I don't think that Rosemary will be insulted that I am trying to raise funds uh, for Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Rosemary is not a big fan of Humpty Dumpty Tribe, but she is certainly an open-minded a uh, very nice woman, so I'm quite sure she'll be okay with me doing this. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for, as I say, there will be a total of six bars of ham-bone palm oil-free soap. They will go to the first six people sending $20. You can either send it to my GoFundMe account you can send it to the Humpty Dumpty Tribe at gmail.com PayPal account or Collapse Chronicles um, at gmail.com. So any $20 donation and I will ship to you your own special edition bar of, uh, of ham bone palm oil free soap. Now, it's going to cost me, Rosemary said, it, it, it costs $6 to mail one bar of soap. So, you will be making a $14. And then, by the time, so you, I will be getting about $13. Uh, so, I will greatly appreciate uh, anybody who can find it in their hearts and wallets and wants to wash in the Hambone Organic Lavender Soap. And uh, Rosemary, it's, it was very nice meeting you and getting to know you here 
in um, in the Finger Lakes region of New York. Don't know if our paths will ever cross, but I do hope they will. It was a great pleasure getting to know Rosemary. Now, who else? Let's uh, they. Uh, but we have a few more updates from the Finger Lakes. We got it's a mixture of good and bad. Now, the about the only reason that I am sticking around after tomorrow is I still have a, a pile of fish woman to meet who ironically enough has been in Florida this whole time she has been down there you know she saw my ad you know trying wanting to live half my life in in the Finger Lakes and half in Florida and she's been down in Florida the whole fucking time I've been here. So she will be getting back at midnight Wednesday night. And we will be meeting up on Thursday for my last day in the Finger Lakes. You know, this is the universe. You know, what the universe puts you through on Pile of Fish. So this woman, uh, we'll call her, I don't know, Betty Boop. Betty Boop describes herself as your basic run-of-the-mill Hillary voting, NPR watching, Ithaca liberal. So I am waiting to meet a big fan of Hillary Clinton and a big fan of NPR radio. There are a lot of uh, Hillary Clinton voting, NPR listening Ithaca liberals running around this town and uh, so we get to have lunch on uh, Thursday so maybe who knows maybe we will fall madly in love we won't talk about Hillary Clinton or NPR radio over lunch so who knows maybe I'll be moving in here with her Thursday night probably won't happen now of course so we'll see what happens with uh, Betty, uh, Betty Bop. Uh, okay, now of course I, I, I know what y'all are really uh, wanting to know. Is what is going on with Timid? Timid! Timid! Well, guys, I am actually having a second date with Tamid. I am having a second date with my wheelchair bound Tourette's syndrome uh, wild, wild child. Uh, <laughs> my guess is uh, this woman has probably thought about Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump for about five seconds. I I have never heard the names Donald Trump or uh, Hillary Clinton leave her mouth. I'm a little bit unclear what this woman, anyway. But I do like her. Uh, so I am going to have a second date with every 30 seconds. Timmy! Anyway, I'm, I'm pretty sure that will be a second and last date. So that's tomorrow night. So that, that love affair, I guess, is still simmering. But guys, we have some bad news. And I, I don't know where to go with this. Uh, I, I, I really am feeling bad about this. And this is the, uh, the, the no shit Sherlock uh, prediction. Uh, it is finally, this one really is, the final axe has fallen. Uh, between Lulu and Hambone. I think this is the fourth and final time that uh, Lulu has dumped Hambone, but very gently, very gently letting me go out of her life. You know, now Lulu, I don't know, uh, I, I, I don't, I have never told the full story of the Lulu uh, adventure, but since it's come to an end, there's no sense talking about uh, water under the bridge, I guess. Uh, but Lulu, just so you know, she is the woman that uh, my not-so-alert tribes member Alistair 
uh, like a goddamn idiot, uh, Alistair told Lulu about Hambone Little Tail and Humpty Dumpty Tribe and Collapse Chronicles both. So Lulu, unlike any other woman I have ever met on Pile of Fish, the dozen or so women, you know, Lulu has known about my big dark secret that I'm a doomer. And so while I never talk about it except kind of joking around in some self-effacing humor uh, with Lulu, she just cannot deal with the fact that I'm a doomer. And this is exactly what I was talking about one um, one week ago tonight at the end of that Flat Earther thing that, uh, you know, how Flat Earthers can't find, uh, you know, can't find romance because they have this crazy, this crazy little idea that doesn't fit into social norms. Well, Lulu was not a doomer chick, but Lulu was sure as hell not, not a normie. This woman is anything but a normie, and this is what attracted me to Lulu, even though she wasn't a doomer, and I don't agree with her on everything, uh, just the fact that she wasn't a fucking normie uh, attracted me to her. And so, it's fine with me. All of her weird ideas uh, it is totally fine. I am willing... Uh, I, I am open-minded, even though I don't agree with this very nice woman. There was no chance of romance between me and Lulu. Okay, we knew from the moment we first met that we were never going to fall in love or whatever. But I was hoping that we could, you know, be friends. Uh, you know, I don't know anybody. I'm, I'm not, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking to find friends around here. So even though there was no chance at a romance, you know, at least I thought I would uh, have a buddy to, uh, you know, a running buddy here uh, in the Finger Lakes if I decide to move here. So I was totally fine with, with all of Lulu's eccentricities, even though I did not share them, just the fact that she wasn't a, a, a goddamn normie. I appreciated these eccentricities. Now, of course, one of her eccentricities is that Lulu channels a space alien. Now, I, all right, now, make sure you're not confusing Lulu with uh, Betty Hill from last week, with the chick from Syracuse who you know, has has been raped by space aliens and has a bunch of little hybrid children uh, running around the planet. Now, uh, as far as I know, Lulu has never had sex with a space alien, uh, either consensual or non-consensual sex. As far as I know, Lulu has not, does not have space alien children. Now, she does have this gorgeous daughter who is an indigo child. The, this, the, this young woman is truly, a, it is an indigo child. Well, she's a grown woman now, but she is not, I'm not claiming that, uh, that Lulu's daughter uh, is the product of, uh, you know what I'm saying. But uh, anyway, so... She is the mother of an indigo child, if you know what that means. So, which, which is something certainly in her favor. Uh, so, anyway, Lulu has met up with her space alien. And uh, it's not looking good for Hambone that... Uh, you know, I am fine with Lulu talking to her space alien, but uh, her space alien has basically told Lulu to let Hambone go, to throw Hambone back in the ocean and look for another fish 
in the ocean where there is a pile of fish. So, uh, as her parting gift to me, Lulu sent me the conversation she had with Thonka, the space alien. So this is Thonka. So Lulu, you know, trying to figure out, I guess Lulu and Thonka were trying to figure out if Hambone or Sam or whoever, they call him Sam, was the man of her dreams. And apparently uh, Thonka said Hambone or Sam does not make the cut. Thonka. This is Thonka talking. Sam is someone who has woken up. He is awake. And he carries much anger. Much anger. He carries much anger. He feels lied to, deceived, and this is how he is channeling his anger. Uh, as I told Lulu, uh, Falk is one smart, uh, smart motherfucking space alien. Yes, uh, like everyone else on this planet, including Lulu, uh, uh, Sam and Hambone and everyone else uh, has been lied to, cradled to grave, has been lied to, and Thonka has shut down my computer. See, this is very common in the space alien community that uh, I, I was I, I, I was in the middle of this. This happens all the time. This is I am a space alien abductee. Okay. Whenever you try to do something like this, this is a perfect example from the UFO literature. Thonka does not want me bringing this message. This is that that was right out of the UFO textbooks. I have uh, shut down seven-story skyscrapers. Uh, you know where the space aliens do not want me traveling here. Sam feels lied to deceived, and this is how he is channeling his anger. Yes, when you spend 50 fucking years uh, on this planet, uh, in this global industrial society, and you understand, you pull your fucking head out of your ass at age 50, and you understand, as Lulu knows goddamn well, that we have been lied to and deceived. Since the, since the day we're fucking born, we have been lied to and deceived. Fonka knows it. I know it. Lulu knows it. That's exactly right. Sam is a good man. Thank you very much, Fonka. Sam is a good man. He lived by the book, played their game, and now does not know how to play the game. Sam does not know how to play the game. I know exactly how to play the fucking game, Fonka. Okay, any fucking time I want to, uh, I can go back in to the goddamn hamster wheel. I can get my goddamn real estate license in Texas or California or Oregon or up here in, in New York, whatever. I can start making a hundred thousand fucking dollars a year, living in the beautiful house, driving the fancy car, taking goddamn nice vacations all over this planet, getting some fucking pussy more than once every five years. I know exactly how to play the game. I don't want to play your fucking game. Don't know how. Uh, Sam doesn't know how to play the fucking game. I, I played the fucking game for 50 fucking years. I know the goddamn rules. I walked away from the fucking rules. I have no interest in their fucking game or their fucking rules. There are no rules for Sam. All right. And then, this, then it starts getting really weird. He is floundering without some rules. Well, you should have seen me when I had some fucking rules. 
Bonka, if you think I'm fucking floundering now, if you think this is floundering, you should have seen me when I was a clueless fucking moron making $113,000 a year or whatever it was the last year I was a fucking uh, clueless moron real estate agent living in a beautiful home, uh, owning four other houses and blah, blah, blah. Talk about fucking floundering. I, I am straight on the goddamn course. Now, Humpty Dumpty Tribe is floundering a little bit, so maybe maybe he has me confused with Humpty Dumpty Tribe. I am straight on line, Thonka. Uh, you want to see some fucking floundering? Uh, give me a goddamn real estate license. Send me back out there with the clueless fucking morons. Watch me flounder my way into a $22,000 fucking credit card at Home Depot. You'll see some floundering. He is floundering without some rules. Without rules, Sam cannot compartmentalize and organize his world so we see his anger. <laughs> oh, I can compartmentalize just fine, uh, Funk. And now, organizing, yeah, I will go there. Yes, I, I will agree with I will give you that one. Uh, it has nothing to do with the rules. Uh, good God, uh, the more rules, the less I would be able to com compartmentalize and organize my fucking world. So, we see his anger. So, Lulu asked, Fonka, how can Sam find his place? How can Sam find his place? This is Thonka. He must quiet himself. He must go within, deeply within, and only there will Sam find himself. In finding himself, he will know, learn, and understand how he can navigate these times. Yes. How he can better serve from the place of love, from his heart center. You know, and, and this is the fundamental break between non-doomers and doomers. This is where Falka and Lulu and anybody who are not doomers, this is the fundamental dividing line this place about serving from a place of love. Where the fuck do you think I'm serving from? Exactly, why does Thonka think that I and some other people uh, down here in the Doomosphere uh, walked away from, you know, from a six-figure job and walked away from a beautiful home and walked away from pussy and, uh, and, and walked away from all of the comforts and conveniences to do this with his life. Perhaps you want to listen to my doomsday sermon today. We will see monsters. You know, this is, this is what non-doomers just are not going to understand about doomers, that doomers, more than anybody else on the planet, more than any fucking bliss ninny, little whatever, uh, is serving from a place of love. That is exactly what, for some reason, I continue to dedicate my life from serving from a place of love. But there is nothing that a doomer is going uh, to say to a non-doomer to make them understand that nothing brings you to a place of love and brings you into your heart center than understanding we are so Do you fucking get it, people?
We're fucked. We're pissed. Jesus fucking Christ. Sam found you. Sam found you, Lulu, simply for you to give him this message. Share this message from your place of love. Signed, your Merkaba. I think a Merkaba is some sort of uh, is some sort of spirit guide or something. Uh, anyway, and, and I honestly believe that Lulu is sending that message to me from a place of love. I honestly do. I'm not. I'm not arguing that I, I, I'm just I, I'm just pointing this out guys that just as I was literally as I was saying from this chair one week ago tonight that it is uh, that it is easier to talk uh, you know like with women you meet on internet dating sites or whatever like that chick last Sunday you know talking about being knocked up by these goddamn space aliens and all of this crazy shit that she was talking about uh, last week. It is easier. Lulu has no problem talking to space aliens, but she can not handle the fact that Sam understands you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet. They don't want to hear it. It doesn't fucking matter if they talk to space aliens, fuck space aliens, whatever. They don't want to hear it. And, uh, you know? And, and, and so I have that rant, and, and then five days later, uh, after saying that, here, here I'm getting dumped by a space alien because uh, I'm not speaking from a fucking place of love. Oh, Jesus. So anyway, Lulu, all I can say in all honesty, uh, I am very sorry that we parted company. Uh, I am very sorry that Alistair ever mentioned uh, Humpty Dumpty Tribe and Hambun Little Tail to you because it, I honestly believe this to this minute, Lulu. And I know you're listening to this, uh, that if you were not aware of Humpty Dumpty Tribe or even Collapse Chronicles, you and I would still be friends. And we, and, and we could be friends uh, for the next 20 fucking years. But you are not. Uh, you, you just can't deal with it, and, and I'm not, and, and I'm not blaming Lulu on it. This is 99% of the people on the planet. They don't want to fucking deal with us. We harsh their mellow. So anyway, in the middle of all this, as I also mentioned in this, uh, in, in in my rant a week ago, I talked about that I had made plans with this woman on Pile of Fish over there in the Catskills, you know, after I meet uh, the Hillary Clinton NPR uh, Ithaca liberal, on Thursday, on Friday, I'm finally heading to the Catskills, you know, to meet up with the, with, with, with the next passel of, uh, of Pile of Fish women. And so I have already agreed to uh, to move in with a woman uh, on pile of fish. I'm going to move in with her. Never, never laid eyes on her. This woman is an absolute normie. Uh, I mean, she's completely clueless, obviously, and she's completely clueless about Hambone Little Town and Humpty Dumpty Tribe and Collapse Chronicles a whole bit. She's never heard the word Doomer out of my mouth. She's never heard we are so fucked. She knows nothing about uh, Hambone Little Tail or Humpty Dumpty Tribe. She has invited me to move in with her. 
So we thought, so she's up here in Syracuse, less than an hour from me uh, this weekend. So we thought we should meet each other. Uh, so Friday night, Friday night we got together just to make sure, you know, she's going, well, Sam, she calls me Sam. Uh, she goes, Sam, we, we should probably, you know, at least like meet each other and have dinner before we make this commitment to move in together. I readily agreed. So I went up there thinking, you know, what the hell, this woman is the normiest of normal women that I have ever met. There's nothing in her profile remotely uh, indicative that she colors anywhere out of the lines. And uh, so I go up there with some trepidation. And so what happens? We spend three and a half hours together on Friday and uh, have a, a totally great time. She and I, we, t we never, never mentioned, I never heard uh, the words climate change come out of her mouth. I never heard blue ocean event. I never heard six mass extinction come out of her mouth. Uh, she sure as hell never heard any of those. You know, we sat there and we talked about real estate investing. You know, she's selling her mother's house and I was giving her real estate advice about selling her mother's house. And, you know, we were talking about she was born and raised in upstate New York. We spent three and a half absolutely pleasant hours together. Now, again, there's no chance of romance. Zero chance of romance. I'm assuming she and I are on the same page of that. I think she understands that I have zero interest in her romantically or physically. Uh, but just a normal woman... So I'm leaving on Friday night, and uh, what she says to me right when I'm leaving, she gives me a hug, and she says, I am so glad you are normal. I was afraid you might be just another weirdo. So I have a normie giving me a hug saying, I am so glad you are so normal. And uh, so then in the, in the last two days, so it ended up, so then she cons me into, well, I actually offered to go uh, help her work on her deck, you know, her rotten deck, you know, changing out deck boards and painting her deck. So I drive back up to Syracuse today to help her with her deck. There's another man there from that she met on Pile of Fish working on her deck when I get there. <laughs> I mean, this woman, she's ballsy. She invites two of two men she met on Pile of Fish to, uh, to fix her deck for her. Probably got about a $400 deck job out of the two of us. But we all had a big laugh out of it. That here we are, just the three of us, working on uh, on your deck and uh anyway uh and she mentioned at some point today she was telling this story about this other fellow she met on on pile of fish uh who lives in ithaca going out with this woman with tourettes this woman in a wheelchair with tourettes who would scream every 30 seconds she told me that story and uh, so then, so here we are. So we spent we spent about seven hours today. Uh, she and I, her her other pile of fish date left, and uh, so we get to know each other a little better. And she uh, mentions she brings up them Muslims. She brings up them Muslims, and then at one point, I mean, just and then just. Having a normal conversation, the two of us driving around my truck, the N-word just rolls off her tongue. I, I, and, she, and she could tell that I kind of startled when she said it. It just came out of her mouth, just a natural word. And, and she goes, oh, uh, 
she she goes he's not black so i can i can use that word because he's white and, and i just kind of laughed and then at one so then she starts talking about she knew i was from texas but she didn't know i was from austin uh and so she finds out i'm from austin instead of texas and that got her really suspicious uh when she found out i was from austin she said i used to have a really good friend from austin but during the election meaning the trump election during the Trump election, our friendship was destroyed. You know, she just said during the election, she didn't mention Trump's name. And I was thinking, well, at least the woman, uh, even, even despite the, the, the Muslim, the Muslim's remark and the N-word, uh, and, and I said, oh, really? I said, what happened there? And she said, well, you, you know, she was, uh, she voted for Hillary. And then she kind of looks at me out of the corner of her eye with this little smirk on her face. And she goes, please tell me you did not vote for Hillary Clinton. And, and I laughed. I said, I did not vote for Hillary Clinton. And she breathes a sigh of relief. And she said, you know, she basically wanted to find out what I thought about Hillary Clinton. And I said, I think Hillary Clinton is the single most despicable bitch in the United States of America. I said honestly to her. And she laughed and she loved that uh, because, because that, that good old boy from Texas uh, did not vote for Hillary Clinton and thinks Hillary Clinton is the most despicable bitch in uh, the United States of America, and this is the woman that I will be moving in with in a couple of weeks. I am moving in with a Donald Trump supporter. She has never heard of Hambone Little Tail or Humpty Dumpty Tribe. And she's going to be living there. We're, we're living in, in this mobile home together. And I'm going to be getting up every day. She doesn't work. She works a little sometimes, you know, a few hours a week uh, driving a bus or something. But she's going to be there. And, you know, I've got Collapse Chronicles interviews. I, I got several Collapse Chronicles interviews lined up. She's got good internet in her place. So, uh, I want everyone out there to make, start making your bets. How long is Hambon Littletail going to live with, uh, with a Trump supporting normie in the Catskills? We will see how this plays out. But anyway, uh, I will keep you updated as I say, I have my date with Timmy tomorrow night in my Hillary Clinton voting Ithaca Liberal on Thursday. Then it's off to the Catskills to move in with a Trump supporter. Oh, and of course the biggest news, Jesus, the biggest news of the entire week is nothing to do with pile of fish right here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. I do not, it has finally happened that the doomer chick of my dreams has come forward right here from inside the tribe. We will call her Cassandra. Cassandra has promised me that I, that, that she is the doomer chick that I have been looking for all of these years right here in Humpty Dumpty Tribe, and she lives, I'm still trying to figure out where the hell the woman lives, but I, I'm getting the very sinking feeling that she lives somewhere, you know, like fucking Peoria, Illinois, where I'm not going to be anywhere near. So here I am, uh, uh, up here, and I don't even know where this girl is, where my doomer chick is. Uh, anyway, the universe is going to put me through a few more 
The Life of a Doomsday Lonely Heart. It's ugly out there. Get out there and find your doomsday lonely heart while you still can. Wish me luck, guys, because I'm going to need it. Bye, guys. Goodbye, Lulu. Goodbye, Thonka.